Over the past 12 months, I've gone from tinkering with AI systems in my spare time to becoming a CEO of an AI startup with teams of developers and admin staff whose livelihood depends on me. So this has been quite a jump for me as a 23 year old who's up until recently been used to working on fairly independent projects, just my own kind of thing, my e-commerce stores and things like this. So in recognizing recently that the stakes for me are a lot higher, I've decided this year to grow up in a number of ways. Cutting back on my drinking and partying, settling down here in Dubai for more than a few weeks at a time so that I can get into some rhythm and really let things compound over time. And finally, the, the interesting one for this video in particular is trying to be more responsible with my finances. Prior to this year, I've never bothered to track my spending or expenses because I, I saw it as requiring a whole lot of energy that could have been better invested in actually making more money so I didn't have to worry about how much I was spending in the first place. So I thought, why would I worry about trying to conserve when I could grow my way out of my problem rather than conserve my way out of it, if you get what I mean. But this will change when last year I hired my assistant Nina and I now had the means to track my expenses without eating a chunk of my time each week. So over the past few months, Nina has been helping me to sort, organize, categorize my expenses and spending so that I have a finger on the pulse of how much money I'm spending each month. But the system we're currently using is definitely not the best, it's pretty clunky to say the least. So in this video, I'll be taking you through how I've sort of revolutionized and streamlined the system that we're using that's saving her a ton of time per week and, and allowing her to work on more important things. The most important part of this build is a GPT vision integration, which is kind of what I want to highlight for you in this build and that you can start building these projects and integrating GPT vision into your builds for personal use as I'm doing or into your client projects as well, using a super simple method that I found to integrate vision capabilities into your AI solutions. Nina, sorry to be interrupting your day, but uh, I figured we need to get a little bit of your side of the story on this. Um, you wanna walk through the expenses process and kind of how we got here and how frequently we do it and the worst parts about it um, so that we get a full idea of what the system is right now. Okay, so normally you just send me a screenshot of all your expenses for the past two weeks and then I just go through them and I kind of, you know, have my own prompt that I put into chat GPT but I also do it manually sometimes if I notice that it's not correct or there's a lot of errors. It's a really tedious process, to be honest. It takes around two hours at the minimum, and I'm really speeding through it. Yeah. I didn't even know it took that long. I thought it was my thing. Like, I come on the school thinking that you were going to say 30 minutes. Two hours. Yeah, two hours. I mean, because of course I have to backtrack, check them, I mean, make sure everything's right. Well. Like, yes. Gosh. Okay. I mean, this video just became a whole lot more important than I thought it was going to be. So, two hours. And there's also me just dragging the pick and, and not sending them over when, I, when you ask me to. So it's funny how even just me screenshotting them and sending them to you seems like I, it's difficult for me to do sometimes when I have to squeeze them. So, well, can you just walk us through a little more? Because there's one bit in there. Are you still using the, like, are you sending them to your phone? Are they extracting the information out of it that way? Or are you doing it on your back? Yeah, so no. Your um, I'm sending it to my phone, but I think most people can probably just do it on their Mac. Um, and then I just kind of add them to a notes page and then I go through them, just kind of space them out nicely. Yeah. Uh, and then I enter them in. In future, if this, if I give you a task that's this inefficient, can you please tell me that it's taken you two hours? Cause I should have, I should have come up with a system for this a long time ago. So good news is that I'm, uh, I've, I've got something pretty cool and uh, I can give you a little demo of that now. So here's a visual representation of the system we're currently running. Firstly, the bank is going to be sending an automated SMS to me every time a transaction goes through my credit card or my accounts or my debit card, etc. So any transactions are all being centered onto my SMS and coming through as a text message. So this is kind of handy for me. Not all banks do this, um, but instead of taking my transactions at the end of the month, I'm able to just get them from screenshots. So first step of the human involvement of the system is to screenshot my weekly transactions. So currently uh, what I will do is screenshot these and, and Neil will ask me, hey, can you send me your expenses for the week? I'll then screenshot them and sort of block out uh, up to the past seven days, send them over to Nina, and then she would have to use the iOS or Mac OS OCR that you might notice sometimes if you have an updated Mac or, or iPhone. There's a little button down the corner that allows you to select text out of the image. And so I told her to use this and copy the text over to ChatGPT, use a prompt that I'd written to categorize it and give it out in a nice format like this. Like here's the day, here's the next day, here's the category, here's the charge, etc. And then she was taking that information and going over to my Notion and setting it up manually and putting in each of the rows. So not super efficient. And as you can tell, it was taking up quite a lot of time for her. But the new system, which I'm about to take you through is a little bit different and it takes out a significant part of the human involvement here and strips it down to a largely automated process using GPT Vision. So same as usual, bank sends the SMS to me. I'm going to be screenshotting the weekly transactions. I will still send them to Nina um, and then she'll be able to send them to the WhatsApp number. I mean, I could do these myself as you'll see later on, but I think it's still good for me to not have to be going through the WhatsApp number and, and managing it 
um, I think she can go in and set it up herself. So what she's able to do with the system I've created is send those screenshots to the WhatsApp number. We're then going to be using GPT Vision via a voice flow chatbot build that integrates GPT Vision with a super easy integration, which is really the key of this build is voice flow to WhatsApp, but also integrating non-text inputs into your WhatsApp build. So as I see here, the magic really happens with this step. So it's going to be extracting from the screenshots all of the different transactions and putting them into a JSON object that we're then able to send to make.com. And I've set up a fairly simple automation on make and it's taking all the data from GPT Vision and then one by one, adding them to my Notion database, which is going to be displayed on a chart. So whether you're interested in managing your finances in a similar way to this, or you're more interested in how you can get GPT Vision and WhatsApp GPT Vision enabled chatbots that you can sell, this video is going to be very interesting for you. This chatbot's been built on voice flow, fairly simple build, nothing too complex, a couple buttons. Then we have the GPT Vision step, which I'll be going into in a sec. But just so you have an idea, nothing too fancy here, not a gigantic canvas that we've used here. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like on WhatsApp, which is probably more important. So here I can say hi, trigger the assistant. Hi Nina, what can I help you with? I'd like to log expenses, upload a screenshot. It's going to ask me if it has a date. It's the top one does, stat 23 of March. Now the GPT vision step is extracting the information. As you can see here, we have all of the transaction data that we want to be carrying across. Then we can go continue. It's going to add those to Notion now. And that's all she needs to do. Now if you look over here on my Notion, and we can see the expenses here added in, the Amazon, Dubai taxi, and outward transfer. So that's how easy it is for Nina to upload these now. I'll give you a bit more of a breakdown on how we built this thing with voice flow. The basic main menu here that I've kind of earmarked some future features that I could build into this, if it's going to be an assistant for my assistant to try replace my assistant, or at least augment Nina to be more productive and be able to do more things. Maybe logging expenses is one, as we've shown here. Reordering my food, checking for flights, checking my inbox for important tasks. These are all features that I can build in over time using similar AI systems. WhatsApp chatbots like this can be a really solid base for having a couple options like this for businesses or for personal use. Long story short, we're taking in the image, converting it to an image URL, and then we're sending that image URL off to the OpenAI Vision API. And in order to do this through WhatsApp and, and to process it within VoiceFlow, we're using a VoiceFlow custom function created by the FlowBridge team. FlowBridge is a platform created by members in our own community to deploy your VoiceFlow agents to meta platforms in minutes. So this is really the key of this build, which has allowed me to easily put my voice flow chatbot onto WhatsApp, but also to accept non-text inputs like images and handle it through their custom function. So this is actually a platform that's made by three guys from our own community. So shout out to the Frobridge team. It's been awesome working with you all. This is not a sponsored mention, but I'm more than happy to be mentioning the awesome work that you guys are doing over there. So if you want to get your voice flow chatbots onto Instagram, onto Facebook Messenger, or onto WhatsApp, uh, this is the way to go if you don't want to use the custom API things that VoiceFlow offers. So super helpful. Uh, these guys are going to help you out in anything you need as well. So they're super responsive on support as they have been with me throughout this build. So the Flowbridge team has created this custom function. Luckily, you don't have to write anything in here. I've done a little bit of custom prompting just to make sure it's extracting the right information that I want. But this is available through a link that I'll leave in the description. You can add this into any of your VoiceFlow projects if you want to be able to interact with the OpenAI Vision API and to be able to take in image inputs in your WhatsApp chatbots and things like that. And not only do they have a function for image inputs like this, they also allow voice inputs through WhatsApp as well. So they have a special function for that too. So I'll leave links to both of these down in the description. So if you want to check those out, they'll be available there. Once the Vision API has taken our image URL and pulled that information off the image, we're then going to be sending it off to make.com and over here you can see I have a little scenario cooked up, which is based off a webhook. I'm then gonna be passing the JSON into a format we can use. And then basically I'm just iterating over all of the different transactions. You can see that the webhook gets these transactions like this, and then we convert it into JSON over here. This post request here is sending the information from the Vision API output to this webhook. And this webhook is receiving them like this. And then we're basically just looping through each one of these. So each one of these is a transaction. We want each of these to become a row on Notion. So using the name, the date, the amount, and the category that we've been given by our categorization system with the Vision API. And then it's just a case of looping over each of those transactions until all of them have been added into Notion. And the final step was once I built this chatbot and I was happy with the functionality, I said, okay, now I need to try and put this onto my WhatsApp chatbot so that I can give a number to Nina for her to be able to ask questions to and, and use rather than trying to use some kind of web chatbot or something like that. I wanted it to be on WhatsApp so she just had a number, could send the message, send the screenshots, and it'd be all done like that. I was able to do this integration between VoiceFlow and WhatsApp with FlowBridge, as I mentioned. It's fairly easy to come in here. All you need to do is come in and add in a new client company. In this case, Morningside AI I have. I added a new VoiceFlow project in which you have to add in some information like the project ID, the VoiceFlow token API, and things like this. Once you've added that information, you just go to client integrations, create a new integration for that particular project. And in this case, we'll be going Morningside AI, the Finance Analyze project, give it a name, 
And then we get to select what channel we want. We have WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, or web chat. So I, of course, chose the WhatsApp option, and then I just used their automatic login feature. So I just logged in with Facebook, set up a business manager, and connected everything up fairly easily. So that was super easy to get things put onto WhatsApp. So now I'm interested in getting this into Nina's hands and seeing what she thinks about it. So let's jump on the call with her now. Um, so I have a phone number that you can add on WhatsApp. Okay. I've just sent it to you on iMessage. And then I'll also send you the latest screenshot that I need to add it. So the new system is going to use screenshots still, um, because that's the easiest way. And I mean, I could technically use this WhatsApp chatbot, but there is still a little bit of playing around with it that I have to do. So um, that's still going to be your job. So while this video is replacing my system with AI, it's augmenting my system with AI because you we can't replace you. All right, so I've sent you that screenshot. Now, if you just send a message to the WhatsApp assistant, it should say, hi, Nita, what can I help you with? And you'll see that there's a couple options there. There's live expenses, real food. We started to kind of plan out how we could add new features onto it through different buttons. But for now, log expenses is the only one. So if you click on that. Hi, Nita, what can I help you with? Yep, and just send it the screenshot. Please want to load a screenshot. I just say the date was um, yeah, so it was, I mean, when it asks you what the, if it has a date, then we need to check. So it was Sunday the 31st. So it goes Sunday 31st of March. Okay. So to ask me if one of the screen child has a date, so I need to say no. No, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. And then you put in the date. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Please provide the... Okay. Oh, you need to put it in that format, actually, so it's, um... About 03, 2024. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. wait, 31, 03, 2024. 31, 03, yeah. yeah. A lot of the Americans got those loopy dates. I had to make sure you went. <laughs> I, yeah. I would just as... Okay. So now, when you get all those Cody-looking things back, just check that the dates yeah. are all correct, and then it's, like, 31st, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, it says 30.03, so it's not 31st, but it's fine, right? Good enough. Yeah, and then go continue. And then watch the notion, and it should pop in there, see if you can catch it on screen. Boom. Got it. Okay. Got it. <laughs> How easy is that? Yeah. Here's spot with Emma, right? Uh, it is also helpful because I have to do this for... Like morning side as well, and usually that one takes even longer, and I can't get anything wrong. Mm. Um, yeah, sure. That's probably something we can modify the system for. So, anyway, I won't take any more of your time. That's the system. I'll be sending all my screenshots to you now, and you can just check away. And as you can see, I've got those other little functions. Like, I think the reordering too thing that you're having to do all the time could be a cool one to yeah. add on to one of those buttons. So, I'll keep having stuff into this over time. But, um, Nina, thank you for your time. And, um, Welcome to the yeah, one, you don't know who you is, my assistant. Uh, and I'm sure to be seeing her on the channel also soon. Bye. Thanks, Liam. Hi, guys. So Nina's obviously pretty happy with the end result. I didn't know it was taking two hours. I thought it might've been half an hour and out, um, but I'm very glad to have got that off her plate now. Um, just to show you what the end result is after it's gone through and logged all of those transactions, the key part here is that I've got a, a special prompt that I've written that's in the voice flow build that I'll be sharing with you guys as a template. If you want to use it, I'm going to be down on my school community down below so you can get all the templates, the make.com automation, the voice flow template, everything that you need to do uh, to connect up a similar thing for yourself. Uh, but this is the end result here. So after it's categorized at all, I then have a chart here that I'm using a platform called Chartbase. And on Chartbase, I've been able to set up a month that connects to my Notion database with all of the expenses that get logged in there. And I've got the dates, I've got the month along the bottom and I've got the amount on the side. So it allows me to see very easily month by month how much I'm spending. And then it allows me to see sort of the baseline costs that I have associated to my lifestyle and like my apartment and things like this. So one of the cool things that I've set up is this uncategorized feature, which is like my inbox for my expenses. So when Nina's going through and putting all those transactions through, some of the transactions are either going to be uncategorized or they're unsure. Or in this case, there'll be outward transfers of my account where money is left. I've sent it maybe on my banking app. And it doesn't have any information as to who I'm sending the money to. It just says transfer. So I can come in here and see which ones haven't been categorized. I can go, that was for this person, etc. And I can start to make sure every single one of my expenses is tracked properly. There is a little bit more that I would like to do with this, which is this top categories by month. I think this graph would be a lot more useful if I had it showing what I was spending per category per month. So on my food, it'd be nice to see, okay, February to March, I spent less on food. So that's something else that I'm probably going to try build into this app. But uh, I just thought I'd show you guys this video. I was doing this anyway, so I thought, why not just make a little bit of a video about it, showing you how you should be following your own curiosity. If you are stuck and you are trying to start an AI business or get into the space, 
these are the kind of projects you should be looking at building. Look, I've applied my skills in make.com, creating the automation. I've used my Notion skills to, to learn how to use Notion better and set up these databases. I've used VoiceFlow to set up my chatbot backend. Then I've used this new tool, FlowBridge, to connect VoiceFlow to WhatsApp and also integrate a GPT vision component into my app. Now, the amount of learning that you will go through by trying to create some of these projects for yourself personally is immeasurable. And this is how I got my start, is just following my own curiosities and scratching your own itch. I highly recommend for you guys, if you're looking to get started and you're struggling to learn the different skills and you're like, oh, I need a course on VoiceFlow or I need a course on this or I need to just start, just pick something like this and say, hey, look, that's cool, something Liam did. I can try spin this to a different use case and connect it up using the similar tools. Follow those itches and that'll lead you far further into the AI space and, and towards the success that you're likely looking for than if you're trying to look for someone to spoon feed it on a plate for you, the exact miracle recipe to learning a certain platform. Just get in there and start playing around. I certainly learned a lot about Notion and database structure during this project. So it's all compounding and I I'd highly recommend you guys do something similar to this. But that's about all for the video guys. I hope that's got the ideas flowing for you and the kind of projects you can build yourself. All the templates and resources related to this. If you want to replicate this or at least see how I've done this, it's gonna be available in my free school community. You can click on the YouTube tab and you'll pull up one of the posts related to this video. So everything's on there, it's free to join. Um, and there's a ton of other resources there as well. If you've enjoyed this video, of course, hit down below, leave a like, leave a comment if you wanna see other kinds of videos from me and subscribe to the channel if you want more AI related business content and how you can build and sell AI solutions to businesses. But aside from that, guys, that's all for the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.